But now, when you were going, leaving the room, yeah. right now, you can yes. stay yeah, there about man, center, and chakra. Man. No, no, he asked a question. Huh, right, right. yeah. Right. So in, re in reply, in response, you replied, I mean, um, that man, man, a man. Chak, uh, mind, a centers. The and centers. Manas, na chakra. Manas are the chakras. Uh -huh. The A centers are the chakra musufi. Right. Is it on? Okay. Uh, no, no, no. See, what did we say on the, in the first day that what are the functions which are given to the born child, the newly born child? That's it. The soul, it seeks a human form. Mm -hmm. Why does it seek a human form? Because it gets certain functions. It can think, it can feel, it can sense, it can move. And there's one more function, sex. <coughs> right? So these functions are called mind. Mm -hmm. So we have a thinking mind, mm -hmm. a feeling mind, a sensing mind, a moving mind mm -hmm. and that which gives petrol to all the minds we call it as sex. Mm -hmm. right? So it is the big petrol pump. Mm -hmm. you understand what I am trying to say? So the mind, uh, it has these functions but usually, so we call it four centers. A man has a thinking center, he has an emotional center or a feeling center, he has a moving center and he has an instinctive center. Right? But supposing you go on a trip somewhere and I ask you what did you do on that trip and you say okay I went to all these restaurants to eat. So that memory of that trip all the restaurants in which center is installed? In the instinctive center. You get what I am trying to say? But supposing you went on a trip and uh, you say you met your relatives or maybe you went to some art galleries, so then which center are we talking about? Feeling center. The feeling center. Right? But supposing you spend your time studying something, then you're talking about the thinking center. And you spend your time taking long walks, then you're taking the moving center. Everybody has a center of gravity in one center. Right? That does not mean the other centers are not active, but they have a center of gravity in one center. So a person may have his center of gravity in the thinking center. So for him life is more intellectual. So he is interested in reading, he is interested in books. You get what I am trying to say. A person may have a center of gravity in the feeling center. And that person is more interested in feeding other people, looking after other people, take a job as nursing or something of that sort. Also, a lot of the music and the arts and all will come with the feeling center. But a person is interested in sports only, the moving center. And a person is interested in the good things in life. Right? So the instinctive center. You understand? So a person will have a center of gravity in one center. That is more uh, focused in one center. And he sees life through that center. So a person, so these are four windows, right? And all these four windows together make reality. But a person spends his whole life looking through one window. Can you understand? And then if his wife is looking through another window, the thinking, looking through a thinking window, the wife is looking through a feeling window, then there's going to be clash. Because she will say this is the truth and he will say 
this is the truth. And truth is all four to get. So those are the centers. Centers is a very, very deep study. Very deep study. So, uh, because again there are parts of centers. Right? And each thing represents something. So, if I am in a low quality of attention, then I am in a lower part of a center. I am in the thinking center, but I am reading, but by the end I have not read anything, I don't remember anything. Can you see? So, I am in the thinking center, but the quality of my attention in the thinking center is of a very low time. Right? person is in the moving center, but the quality of attention is very low. Then oh, he'll be sitting here, then he get up and do this, then he get up and do this. He can't sit for the quality of attention is very low. So depending on the quality of attention in each center, we are either deeper in the center or shallow in the center. This quality of attention is of three kinds. Zero attention, again which we call as tamas. Attracted attention which we call as rajas and directed attention which we call as sattva. So uh, study of the centers, then we can relate the centers to the 52 playing cards. Okay. So diamonds, that is diamonds will mean the thinking center. Hearts will mean the feeling center. Spades will mean the moving center. And clubs will mean the instinctive center. Right? Now, if you take the picture cards of each center, there will be jack, queen, king. So I am in the instinctive center, but I am not bothered. I am just eating like that. There is no lower, very lower quality. So my attention quality is of the jack. Can you understand what I am trying to say? But I am attracted in the center that my attention quality is of the queen. But I am holding attention in the center that attention quality is of the king. So when we, the playing cards actually they are a whole map of the centers. Then again in each we can divide attention from 2 to 10. What is the quality of attention? 2 to 10. So we have all the playing cards. Right? So if a person comes to meet us, we we'll say, and he's talking, we we'll immediately say he's the 7 of clubs or 5 of diamonds. Can you understand? We recognize the person. In that, we know everything about the person. So it's a very deep study of the center. Now, today we will just continue where we left off yesterday. Do we uh, make an effort to realize how we lose energy? How we lose energy? Because if we want to hold attention inside, we need energy. Right? But we don't have energy, so we always like to live our life in a lower quality of attention. If I didn't have to use will to direct my attention, I'll be happy. Or if I could watch the TV all the time, my attention is what you call attracted by the TV, then uh, I don't have to, what you call uh, So where am I losing the force to hold attention? Where am I losing the force to hold attention? And where does that force come from? Can you understand what I am trying to say? Negative Negativity, reactions, daydreaming. <coughs> Unnecessary talking, right? So these are all leakages of energy. 
Now, for holding attention, we need a very special energy to hold attention. So, when we hold attention at a certain quality, yesterday we saw it was called dharna. So, where does that energy to hold attention come from? Does it come from the food we eat? Does it come from the air we breathe? Does it come from some other source? Or is there some other source? All of them. All of them. All of them. When we eat, we get energy. When we breathe, we get energy. Yes. I'm only talking about the energy to hold attention. Not the energy of the moving center. Not the energy of the feeling center. Not the energy of the thinking center. Where does it come from? What is the source of that energy? So, does it come from the sleep we get at night? And in sleep, what happens when we get energy? Right? So, just as there is a sun outside which is the source of energy, there is a sun inside. There is a sun inside. Right? So when we go into very deep sleep, the soul and the spirit become one. Right? That is the state of Samadhi. The soul and the spirit become one. Then as we come out of deep sleep, the soul separates from the spirit. But it comes back with a new energy. It comes with a new Energy. So if we don't have a deep sleep, we, we won't get that energy? Mm -hmm. We'll get very little. Only those few moments of deep sleep. It's like a battery recharge. It is a very special energy. A very special energy. That's what it is people need to get deep sleep, so that's the reason we have to get Yeah, but then many people get the energy, but are they able to hold the energy? Are they able to hold the energy? Right? So, in the morning something happens, my wife gives me cold tea. And if I flare up, then, then I've lost everything. I've lost everything. So in one small flare of one small negativity, that energy which comes from the inner Atma, right? The spirit, the soul, in deep sleep it becomes one and it comes out like having a bath. Right? It comes out and it comes with, it is this energy which we need to progress on the spiritual path. <coughs> it is this energy which allows us to recognize the inner spirit. But we don't, we are not able to hold this energy. One small negativity and everything is lost. Very few people, <coughs> they are able to increase this energy. And they steal it from somewhere. They steal it from nature. They steal it from nature. Right? So, <coughs> nature, its source of energy is the sun. sun. So, you look at the sky and you look at the sky and you look at the sky, do you get energy? Not this energy. No. Not this energy. Try to understand. Right? You, where do you get this energy? When you go into sleep, sleep at night. Right? And when you wake up in the morning, you wake up with this pocket money. Right. But everybody's eyes are on that pocket money. Steal it. Who wants to steal it? Nature. Why does she want to steal it? She's in the process of evolution. Right? So what is her source of energy? The sun. Can we take it then? The sun. Right. 
right? But this energy does not come from the sun. It comes from within. It is not from the sun. Can you understand? It comes from the inner spirit. Right? So, nature wants that energy. If I get angry on you, I throw it out. out. To nature. And she takes that and she creates life in those parts of the universe where there is no life. Because she needs. There a connection in that because I read somewhere that in the morning, if you hug a tree, it gives you energy. Is it true? Not this energy. Not this energy. There is other energy that is only one source. That is? Inside. Soul and spirit. Huh? And we sleep. Soul and spirit connection. Yes, when we sleep. There is another source which we are coming to. Okay. We are not going to come by hugging a tree. But the thing is, so if you're morning, if you hug a tree, you get hurt. Don't, don't watch TV after you get up for at least two hours. Don't read paper. <laughs> you lose your energy. You lose it. You lose it. Yeah, you lose it. If you read paper because your mind going into all these things, then you lose it. You lose it. So don't watch TV, don't do anything to it. During sleep, I collected some energy, my soul, I mean, from spirit. And now I have that energy. What does nature get nature's energy from sun? What does nature do with my... my she gets divine, this is divine us. energy. Yeah. So, they make so is the uh, divine energy is the source of life? So then supposing the she says that tomorrow she wants to create life on the moon. Will the only sun's energy do or does she need some extra energy? She needs this energy. Ah, and there's only one source. That's us like man. Life. Life. No, not life. No, us. No, man. Man. Even even tree will have life energy. But only when they die. Okay. So then how come I don't have to die to deplete all my energy to nature? We it does happen. We make it every night. Every night comes in and in the morning we waste it and give it to the nature. So does a tree get it from roots? You have to have an individual mind for this energy. Oh, okay. okay. Right? You can't have a universal. Right? So, in nature, all the animals, the soul is universal. Except? Man. Because animals don't dream. Definitely not dream. So, they don't have any kind of dream. They don't have ambition. <laughs> That has to do with those fire elements, earth, ether, ether, earth. No, 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 nothing. Nothing. Right? Okay. So now, nature wants that? Divine energy. Energy. Huh? So how is she going to take it? Prompt us to give it up. Yes. Yeah, so no, she has to create a situation. Right. Where we get? Angry. angry, we get negative. So that's the nature making us angry. Right. <laughs> so blame it on it. Don't blame it on nature. <laughs> she throws the net and the fish gets caught. <laughs> right? So then we are the fish. poor old fish. We get caught in the net. Right? Why does divine do that? Divine has our own interest too. If okay. I'm a divine fragment. What does divine, why would divine um, um, give the other card to the nature so that they can steal this energy this way? See, nature wants a certain kind of energy. Mm -hmm. So she creates plants. Plants take that energy from the sun. Mm -hmm. They process that energy in their skin and they give it out. Mm -hmm. Then she creates animals. Animals also take energy from the sun. Again, they digest it and do whatever they want to and they give it out. But still she is lacking in one very fine energy. So she created 
man. She created man. And she had to create man in such a way that man can either evolve or just be a machine to provide energy to nature. Humanity is just a machine to provide energy to nature. Every night they go to sleep, they get some energy. In the morning they react because the tea is cold and they give it all. But that's the end of the book. Nature's purpose is served. Can you understand? Now it is this energy which, which has come from the divine and which takes me to the divine. Now is it clear? Now in the morning nature throws the dead and I say I don't want to get angry. I don't want to become just a machine in nature, a part of nature's machine. I want to wake up. So instead of me giving energy to nature, I steal energy from nature. And this is how I rise up the ladder of consciousness. Maybe that's why very few people can rise because Everybody else is just a machine. Can you understand? Okay. So today we are going to talk about something called the pause. The pause which we talked about yesterday. Pause is holding the manas separate which we talked about yesterday. Right? Talk about the pause. Now, what does the pause mean? What does the pause mean? Stop. And At what point do we stop? Between we receive an impression or we receive an impulse from outer life, right? And something is decoded inside and then it goes into action. So initially we pause between the decoding and the action and then we pause before even the decoding. Right? So we are going but to take... not even sometimes aware of all these processes. That's the whole thing, right? So the whole thing is to bring in consciousness. Not like the whole thing is to bring in consciousness. consciousness. So let us take some of Patanjali's sutras in this. Right? So the first sutra is Yuthan Sanskaryo Abhipav Abhipava Pradurbhava Nirodakshara Chitta Anvai Virod Parina So what? Vyutha It means fragmentation Reaction So what is my sanskar today? What sanskar do I have today? Reaction. To me, my automatic habitual process in life is to react every moment. Huh? To react every moment. So this is the habitual sanskar which I have. Huh? So we say, Vyuthana, now I introduce a new habit. The habit of pause. So every time I am reacting to something, I say I don't want to react, I pause. So now I am changing a habit of thousands and thousands of years. Everybody reacts. Can you see? It's very rare to find a person who does not react. So, all of us live in which, our whole lives in which sanskar? Yuthan. To react. 
right? Now we bring a new sanskar, pause, bring a new sanskar. Vyuthana nirod sanskar. Yeah? Two, that is why. Abhibhav means disappearing. Pradur Bhava appearing. What we can say? Setting or sun setting, rising. Rising. What will it mean? What will it mean? In our life, this sanskar is disappearing. And this sanskar is rising. This sanskar is disappearing. This sanskar is rising. Yuthano sanskar jayche and nirodhano sanskar no janam jayche. Can you understand? Now, how will we do this? How will we do this? What is the first thing we will do? We will, what is the first thing to do? The first thing. To be free of reaction, to be free of this what he is calling Vyuthan Sanskar, uh, what is the first thing we will do? We will say no to the reaction. Right? So, we will not be fully successful in it. Now we may not be fully successful in it. Now how will we work upon this? Supposing I see that whenever I meet one person, I always react. Homework is there. Now I'll say the next time I meet him, I'm going to pause. I am going to pause the reaction. I have made a start. You understand what I am trying to say? Hmm? Or I may say when I meet a person of a certain religious type, I react. Now I am going to say I pause. These are automatic re reactions which are already within us. Uh, so we are starting from very basic. Can you understand what I am trying to say? Huh? Or if I see a room untidy, I react. Now I am going to say I pause. You understand what I am trying to say? So we will take a few of our very typical reactions and we are going to say, now these reactions when they come, we are going to introduce a pause and say, at that moment, I am going to say no to the reaction. I am going to say no to the reaction. Right? Now, those reactions, they are like, they want to be nourished. So they become more powerful. So there will be an inner struggle. I will see the same person. Definitely, I am going to start feeling reactive inside, again through my understanding I will pause, again I will feel reactive inside, again through my understanding I will pause and a point will come when I see the same person, I don't react. What has happened? Vyuthan Sanskar has died and Nirod Sanskar has been born. Right? Now where else will we use it? Where else will we use it? Supposing we have a feeling that life should go the way we want it to go. Right? So you decide tomorrow what all the expectations we have from life. And we have so many expectations from life. And life has no guarantee to fulfill our expectations. So when life does not fulfill our expectations, we get upset. Upset. I remember there was one, uh, we were in uh, Uttarkashi and we had this 
beautiful setting. We were, uh, we were staying right on the river. And on that day, it was the World Cup final, the cricket match. So we asked the hotel fellow, that, do you have a TV? He says, I don't. So we got a TV from somewhere. And we got somebody to fit a, what you call, satellite dish. And we got everything ready, all new. Just one day we want to use it to watch the World Cup final. Everything was ready. And in the evening, the match was going to start. And the electricity... <coughs> right, life has no guarantee. Yeah. Life has no guarantee. If we knew in the morning, we would have got a battery or something. Now it was already 10 in the night. It was impossible to get anything. Uh, and all the effort we had done. So, of course, we had not gone to Uttarkashi to watch the World Cup match. But you know, life, uh, when life does not go our way, we get upset. So the first thing we will do is where all are our small reactions in life, we will start with there. So that second thing, we will say that we will make an effort whenever life brings a situation which makes us upset, not to get upset. Right? <laughs> Try to, what will come to help us, what we talked about yesterday. We talked about yesterday. If we take it personally, we get upset. But if it is happening to somebody else, right? So I've not yet talked about self-observation. Maybe next year we'll talk about self-observation. In self-observation, we divide it ourselves into I and it. So I say I divide myself into I and Rajin. So I say who who cannot watch the World Cup match? Rajin cannot watch the World Cup match. But I am watching. I am watching. I am separate. So uh, when it is happening to somebody else, uh, we will not get upset. So the key in uh, uh, what you call. Uh, this is an inner separation where we say it is happening to somebody else, not personal. Then comes, we start working with all our negative states because in our negative states we are highly reactive in our negative states. When I am angry, nothing can stop me from sometimes being... Sometimes sometimes you don't get angry. When you are inside it, like you don't, you don't, the like same somebody thing. comes in and I really don't like, I, because my mind is that I don't like this person. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I see her, I get, like inside I get upset. I don't say anything. So how to stop that? Tense and relax. Are you coming on Sunday? You Sunday teach the exercise. Tense Sunday. and relax the okay. muscles. Uh, this Sunday. This Sunday, yeah. So you starting about the exercise. Oh, we are teaching tomorrow or, uh, or tomorrow and tomorrow we are teaching. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, not Sunday. But tomorrow what time? Tomorrow one to five. We are teaching the exercises. Right? See what is the what is the trick in controlling anger? We can start from two places. One The breathing. If the breathing is in rhythm, I will not get angry. Simple law. Second place. Supposing I say you sit down just now, relax. Relax your eyes, relax your chi, relax. And if you do that four or five times a day, you just run through your body, relax. So you're relaxing the muscles of the body. And you develop a knack in relaxing the muscles of the body. And then when you get angry, you just start relaxing the muscles of the body. What happens to the anger? Simple things. Simple things. 
So either you can go through breathing. Are you angry? I cannot say. I am angry. I have to first pause. Because I don't want to use the word. I. So do I automatically pause or not? Then once you pause, you'll say, yes, it is angry. I am not angry. You see, it is angry. Rajan is angry. So, if you can make an exercise for six months, don't use the word. I. Right? Automatically, you will bring in consciousness. Automatically, you will bring in Nirodha Sanskar. And like we talked yesterday, to stand motionless in the mind. So we are coming to that. So, he's saying, huh? a thousand of years old habit is of Yuddha. Now we are making a new habit of Nirodha. Huh? Right? Now in that moment, in that moment, of Nirodha Kshan. In that moment of Nirodha Kshan, where this is disappearing, this is still to rise, there is a moment where there is absolutely nothing. The mind is in a state of disconnection. Or it is connected with something higher. Right? And there is a moment where you are totally motionless in the mind. A single moment. Right? The minute that happens, the mind transforms. Harina means transformation. The mind Transforms. What it is transformed? It's thousands of years old habit has been lost. Huh? And now it comes to a state where it can remain totally motionless. Maybe for a fraction of a second, you know the shana, Just for a fraction of a second. And in that fraction of a second, we get a glimpse of something in the mind or beyond the mind because the mind has totally stopped. Hmm? So we practice this pause till we can experience this one moment of Nirodha Shara, when everything is motionless. Can we then try to inc <laughs> increase that space? Once we have experienced it, can we then try to ex increase that space. How will we increase that space? How will we increase that space? Another we can translate this is that in that moment there is a permeation anvya, anvay, permeation of the mind by stillness. We cannot even imagine what this will be because for millions of years, the mind has never been still. It has always been connected with something or the other. And in that moment of total disconnection, we experience something way beyond the mind. Right. Now, how will we increase this, stretch this experience? So you see, we started with pause. Huh? That Pause between something which is coming in and our reaction to it. Slowly that became more powerful. The old habit of reacting started dying. This new habit of pause became more and more powerful. And now we had a moment where there was totally nothing. It is not depressive emptiness. It is emptiness where everything is included. Right? Now, can we extend that state? Only by devoting that attention to that particular state. state. Can we, when we are not in that state, 
in the day? Can we go back to that state through remembering? Can we bring it back through remembering? So once we have experienced even one moment of that state, uh, we can do two things. We can keep on, whenever possible, try to remember that state. This is called as Atmasmar. Uh, Guruji have called this as self-remembering. Can you understand what I am trying to say? Right? So, as we keep on practicing the pause, we will gradually extend this state. Like yesterday, we said we were standing in the jungle, but not moving. This is not stopping of thought, please understand. It is not nirvicha. Thoughts will come and go, but we are not moving. If we move, then the thought can hypnotize us. If we move, the thought can enslave us. But if we do not move, the thought cannot do anything to us. Right? So, uh, this is the first sutra of Patanjali uh, related to what we did yesterday, holding the manas back. Yeah. I'm very confused. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Say when thought comes and then I don't move, I don't know still what is not moving. I am standing still. What is this that standing still? The mind is not getting involved with the <coughs> thought. thought. The mind is not getting involved with the thought. The minute I say I to the thought, then, then the mind is involved with the thought. Can you say? Right? Or if I say I to the anger, then the mind is involved with the anger. I am shaking hands with it. Right? I made it a guest in my home. So still those 16 thoughts or... They will slow down. Still in yeah, they will slow down. But they'll be there. They'll be there. They'll do whatever they try to do, but they will not be able to do anything. We are standing motionless. This is what we want to experience. Right? So, yeah. I saw mine in a dream. What? I saw it in a dream. Ah, but what did it show you in a dream? It was like a honeycomb. In a tree. Right. I don't understand it. In the sense of what it was, and all the arrows are shooting in and out of it. You didn't get hurt? No. no good. <laughs> I was just outside. I was not in it. So the arrows are the? They were going like this yeah. and this, and then right. they were like five arrows were becoming one, and one arrow were becoming five. So you just have to stand outside. Let the thoughts do what they want to do. To stand outside the mind. Very good. Okay. Now, the, as we keep on repeating the <coughs> pause, as we keep on repeating the pause, it will get easier every time. It will get easier every time. Now, as we practice and practice, the next state which he says is Tasya Prashant Vahita. Sanskara. Tasya. Then Prashant Vahita Sanskara. Which Sanskara is he talking about? Which Sanskara is he talking about? Prashant Vahita, like a calm river flowing. Vahita means flowing. Calm. What does he mean? What does he mean? The flow of the, yeah? What flow of the? Pause. Initially I had to make an effort. Hmm? Initially negativity would 
hypnotized me, so I could not hold the pause. Right? Initially, my dislike for somebody would hypnotize me. Uh, it would enslave me, so I could not hold the pause. So I kept on making an effort. A point comes where the effort is effortless. The effort becomes effortless. Right? But effortlessness comes after many years of hard effort. Right? Many years of hard effort. Now, what will happen in this when it is flowing so easily? There will be freedom from what? Negativity and freedom from all the opposites of life. Hmm? So, my guru, I just mentioned his word, the cultivation of this habit leads to a spiritual perception. Right? Now we see life as dual. We see life as dual. A spiritual perception awakens. So today you are so nice to me, but I see it as dual. I say anything can happen and tomorrow she can insult me also. And for me it is the same thing. It is the same thing. Can you understand? So now, nothing can disturb this flow. If tomorrow you become insulting, then it should disturb my flow. But it cannot, because I see my spiritual perception as open up. So the spiritual perception opens up. The flow is now undisturbed. Uh, previously, we were made to yeah, not to just see low tide, but to see low tide and high tide together. Suddenly our whole perception of life changes, right? And we know that everything flows in a certain cycle. We know that everything has to end in time, right? Something is moving into higher and higher tide, more and more happiness. It has to turn at some point and summer becomes winter. And this our spiritual perception has opened up. Now nothing can disturb this Lutasya Prashanta Vahita Sanskara. The next one he says Sarvartata Ekagra. Yaha Shai Uday Chittasya Samadhi Pari The first transformation we went through was called Nirod Pari. Now we go into Samadhi Parina. What does it mean? Sarvarthata? Everywhere. My attention is fragmented everywhere. Attention everywhere. Sarvartata Shai Ikagrata Uday In that moment, what happens to the chit? It goes into Samadhi. It goes into Samadhi.
tomorrow we are not taking any yeah. subject. Sunday, I'll be here. Monday, 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 we, Monday. Monday we have to take uh, prayers also. That we have prayer. Monday. Okay, yeah. so then Monday and Tuesday we take prayer. Yeah. Okay, so now, now what would this mean, Sarva? This is the end of it, right? Okay. No, no, no. We are still going ahead. Hmm. Yes, the process. What did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? Yesterday we talked about electro. We said the yeah. And we said that what is formed over here? 120. 120 Electrons. thoughts, thoughts. but these thoughts are not words, the words are formed over yeah. here, yes. yesterday we said the words are formed over here, so these thoughts are before the word, they are thought forms, right, then we first paused, we pulled the manas out, so that the incoming impulse and the, what do you call it, memory met in a vacuum, the thought could not be formed. But this chitta, this chitta, for thousands of years it has a habit to make thought. Right? So as long as we are holding attention and doing it, uh, it will stop making the thought but the minute we, our attention goes away and we start living our normal life, these 120 will start again. This 120 will start again. Are you understanding what? Because it is an old habit. It is an old. So initially we paused, say in that Nirodak Shan for one second. Right? Now we are taking up, going up to 10 seconds. And if we can do it for 10 seconds, then this person, the habit of animation, these thought forms are like animated figures. It has a habit to animate. animate. Each moment, 120, it is a machine to make yeah. animated figures every second. That habit dies. The habit yeah. dies. The habit of thought formation dies. Till then the thoughts would we, the formation would slow down when we are holding attention there. Then that holding of attention became a very easy process. But still this habit had not yet changed. And now this habit has changed uh, to fragment everything. Sarvartata, the very, what do you call, cause of fragmenting everything. The old habit of the chit to create thought. Now it becomes one-pointed, right? It does not allow the thoughts to be formed, right? And uh, this we hold for 10 seconds. Is it now clear? Uh, we are now changing the very habit of the mind. Hmm? So what happened those 16 language things? They will reduce down to 30 to 60 when we are relating to people. And when we are sitting in deep meditation, they will go down to 15 to 30. So this, right? <clears throat> so all the tendencies which we were born with to make something out, you know, the baby comes with so many tendencies. It likes something, it dislikes something. That whole mind which it came with has changed. Came with has now let us take this in a different way. The soul wants to take birth. The soul wants to take birth. But, and it has say, 100 possibilities. But when it goes through the DNA of mother and father, the child which comes out brings only 20 over here. The rest are remaining somewhere. Out of this 20, he lives his life. Right? And it is these 20 which are fulfilled by our 
these are the tendencies in our mind now at this moment we have transformed the mind so we go back to this and we can fulfill something which even the the dna of the mother and father has not allowed to carry through right because we've changed the quality of the mind its tendency we have changed right okay now one more we we'll take one more now supposing i separate i am saying that this is happening to rajen i watching right so i am separating and i see that rajen always lived in reaction so i introduce so we introduce the pause in that pause the mind of rajen went through one transformation he experienced a small moment of motionlessness silence but all the old tendencies and everything are still lying in the mind kept on practicing till this became effortless when this became effortless huh he was able to how uh, hold that state for longer periods in the holding of that state for longer periods the very tendencies of all that he was born with they got transformed so the first transformation was the point of silence the second transformation was the tendency in this effortlessness what was open his spiritual perception the vivek was open up right now each moment life is changing life is changing right and the mind is taking the shape of that change mind is taking the shape of that change so we'll say the mind feels pain the mind feels happiness right initially when the mind felt pain or happiness there was no i watching it was hypnotized by this then we created small moments so the i separated a little then we increased those moments the i separated more then we are now changing the tendencies now the mind still feels pain and happiness but it does not make any that there is no tendency to create any thought form out of it it just feels it it just feels it, it just feels the pain it just feels the happiness but there is absolutely no tendency to create any new thought form out of it we have come to their samadhi parinam right huh but the mind still feels pain Happen. now this person is going through two experiences the experience of the i and the experience of life the experience of i the experience of life the experience of life is changing every moment puna then therefore puna शांत उदित
तुल्य प्रत्यय चित्तस्य एकाग्रता परिणाम The eye is unchangeable, but the mind is still changing. So he's saying the pratye, the apprehension, or the recognition, recognition of that moment as either pain or pleasure right is now balanced is now balanced there is a total transformation in the mind the mind only reflects one thing and that is the real I inside. Till now, the mind changed with pleasure, the mind changed with pain. But now, uh, he has been able to hold that pause which we started in the beginning for such a long period of time. How many seconds? 100 seconds. He is now holding it for a long period of time. The whole mind has transformed. There is nothing left in the mind. Whether it is pleasure, whether it is pain, as this is eternal, the mind is experiencing it as balanced. Huh? This is not separate from this, right? In that, huh, there is just one pointedness and one pointedness for the divine. Huh? The eternal, the experience of the divine is there all the time, right? So these, uh, what we said yesterday, we just went through that uh, to increase the pause, right? And we come to this state inside. Uh, definitely going to take very long. You go to Washington, go to the National Gallery. And there's a painting by a Dutch artist called Vermeer. Right? And in the National Gallery, they have a couple of paintings by Vermeer. And in this painting, it is called The Balance. The woman with the balance. The woman with the balance. There's a woman, and she's holding a small jewelry balance in her hand. Small jewelry balance in her National Gallery also has one Leonardo, but for me this is much more than the Leonardo. And unfortunately, last time, even this year we could not go. Last time it was not; it had been loaned to someone, right? Okay. Now she's holding a balance in her hand, and the room is dark. The room is dark. Right? There's a curtain. And in the curtain, just somebody has not put the full shade. A little gap remains. And from that, a ray of light is coming in the room. And that ray of light is falling on her face. And she's in a deep state of Nirod, shunned, inner, motionless. She's totally motionless. There's this balance in her hand and just that light is enough to see her, you know, face and the beauty of her face. And if the balance is a jewelry balance, so there's jewelry lying on the table, right? Behind her is a picture of Christ in his last supper. And the balance is there, whether it is the jewelry 
whether it is the picture of Christ, Tulya Pratye, it makes no difference. The jewelry is as divine as Christ, and Christ is as material as the jewelry. Tata Shanta Udito Tulya Pratye. Now in life, nothing is separate from the divine, and the divine is not separate from anything that is material. Everything is totally balanced. She has reached that state. The artist has expressed that state in his canvas. Something worth seeing. Right? The artist must have experienced that to do this. Must have experienced the moment to do this. How can one? Must have experienced. So I thought I'd just continue to where we left off yesterday. Huh? <clears throat> right? <coughs> My guru used to when say... When we go in this moment, yeah. thoughts could not be still there or thoughts could go away? Thoughts are so far away as if we are sitting on the mountain and thoughts are down below the mountain. <coughs> now, right? Today I did 45 minutes and no thoughts. Very good. This morning. Very good. But only it was like this part was very heavy. It was still not, you're not in relaxation. Yeah, like you know, I had no thoughts, like maybe early one or two. But then this part was very tense, like I felt like a little alien. But it was 45 minutes. Very good. Right. <coughs> now, let's go through a few small reactions in our life. Right? I did it. I shouldn't say I did it. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't want to feed something inside. We want to pause. Okay. Right? <clears throat> you get it? Yes. Yeah, I get it. So. But if you if you talk to somebody, how you can be that big? Like I myself, I I feel okay. This is really mine, this is theirs. But if I'm saying like to you, so how will you say? No, but you don't, uh, what do you call? Uh, hmm. Don't say? No, no. You say it <coughs> as matter of fact, but don't say it to end cash. Like give me an example. If suppose, how, how can I say it? Supposing I say he is doing a very good job where he has taken new jobs. Yeah. That to somebody is easy yeah. to say he. No, but you will immediately say I got him that job. Oh, okay. Now can you pause over there? Yes. Right? Yes. Or somebody comes in this room and somebody says, oh, the chairs are already arranged. I arranged them. You always want to say that I did. You want to say I did. It. I did it. Right. Can you pause over there? Yes. These are small reactions. Small reactions. But we can learn to yes. pause over there. Right? So, wherever you feel that you are gaining some food for the ego, I did it. This was my doing. Right? So, somebody will come and say, Who did this painting in your home? So you can say after five minutes. Don't immediately answer. I will say I did it. Can you get it? <clears throat> Where else now? Supposing we have to lie and there is greed. What did you say? Sorry. Lie and there is greed. I know you don't know. I know that you don't know. So this is five rupees. Now there's a struggle inside. Okay? She doesn't know. Yes, I can. Okay. 
So where all do we lie to avoid suffering? So even these things are bad when we make up. No, no, I'm not saying bad. I'm just saying where do we want to pause? Nothing is bad or good. You can lie and cheat on income tax all lie, all you want, no problem. Uh, nothing to do with that, right? But can you pause? Can you pause? To take revenge, to put somebody in the place, right? That thought comes immediately. Can you pause over there? Yes. And what do we pause? We want to be observe over there. There's always a sweetness in revenge. When we take revenge on somebody, when I put her in her place, mm -hmm. it you feel so good inside. Yeah, I, I, really I, good inside. Right? And you have to see there is the urge for that goodness. And that is where we have to pause. Right? Then sometimes now the thoughts are going of on about somebody inside. How do we pause then? How do we pause then? How do we pause then? We exchange Thought. places. So whatever I'm saying about you inside, right? I will say if somebody was to say the same to me, me pause. Right? Now, supposing you go in a gathering of people, what are you hoping for? Yes, they, you, yeah, you want them to talk about yeah. you. You want them to talk about again. Pause over there. These are small pauses which we can to come to this state. Yeah. But that we are, we we want to see that somebody. You go to somebody's house. You will have a cons, uh, notion that how well they will treat us, or I deserve more, right? The urge to put yourself right, to defend yourself. I did not want to come late, but the traffic was there. See, we love to put ourselves right. Not my fault, the fault of the traffic. Can you understand? So there, again pause over there. Suspicion. Suspicion. You know what is suspicion? Yeah. What is suspicion? Tell me. Suspicion is like, um, I think he did that. Which one? Whatever some person did, then you have like kind no, of... But what happens in suspicion? What happens in suspicion? You yeah, question if somebody's intention. Well, you might you blame no, no. the person. Supposing I know someone, or two people, uh, they have had some very good times together. Right? Five years, six years, beautiful times. And then he becomes suspicious of her. What happens to all the good times? All done. Huh? All? Gone. Right? Suspicion. What do we call it in Gujarati? What do we make curd out of? What do we call it? Mehrman. You, this much of suspicion, but the whole relationship becomes curved. Huh? This much of suspicion. Right? Made all are you right? So these are a few things where we can see where we are losing energy. Huh? Where we can start to pause. Huh? This is a very, this is the most important thing we can do in our life is pause. It is better than any prayer. It is better than any meditation. Come to that one state where we experience that inner silence. Yeah, if we go there naturally, we yeah. are. I'm going to stop here. Anything you want to ask? 
You take prayer on Monday. You take prayer on Monday. So tomorrow we are taking the characters of the power. Tomorrow we are taking the characters of the power. You pray to help you for help in the power. That is the right prayer. You need a little bit of will in force. No? Little, little bit of will. We don't have will. But sometimes I feel it's, you know, clear. Sometimes I feel it's as clear as mine in the sense that I don't understand how there is no digging or am I going to make that Very good state to be in. <coughs> that is life. It fluctuates. But that which is separate observes the fluctuation. So when you say, I don't know, it's the one I say, yeah. Again, I forgot your name. Swati. Swati, right? I am watching Swati. Swati is indecisive. Swati is confused. Swati now is clear. But you know that clarity is again going to go into confusion. And confusion again goes into clarity. And this is the way life moves. These are the two poles of life. Right? That which is watching the two poles. This will keep on. If you say, oh, I don't want confusion, then you are saying, I don't want clarity. Okay. Hmm? You are saying, I don't want clarity. These are two sides of the same coin. Right? I want to watch how this law operates. This is called the law of duality. Duality. Now people talk straight away about doing. But talk about duality first. No? What is duality? How to understand duality? In the understanding of duality, non-duality will happen. No? What is duality? Right? So if we understand that, just I'm confused. Just now. So I lived with my guru. <coughs> and he was such a person that there should be no, what you call, distrust. But the mind is the mind. So there are many days when you are thinking, is he right or is he wrong? Right? It happens. The mind it moves from trust to distrust. And from distrust to trust. That is the movement of the mind. Right? So that's, that's okay. Then when they both, those movements become parallel, tulya prati. Both those movements become, it takes time. It takes time. We move through so much in life to bring that balance. Okay, we'll stop over here. Thank you. Thank Good night. You. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah.